Okay, welcome everybody. So the recording has started. My name is Lucas Chaffee, lead engineer, uh, Kiko Chat, and also an open space facilitator. It's going to be a very interactive session, so feel free to interrupt me at any time with any questions. So the first thing, as the host, I see there are two live chats. I'm just going to look in there and see if there was anything that someone needed. It looks like people are able to get in. Okay. I'm going to share my screen and describe what we have here. You've all entered this space here on Kiko Chat. You've all clicked join video for main room. So that's how you're here in Zoom. I start off these calls by giving people a chance to type their name and organization. So right now behind Zoom is your Kiko Chat page. That's the first thing for folks to understand is that Zoom is not opening in your browser. So you have to kind of move them either side by side or go back and forth. And right now, while I'm screen sharing with you, it's a little bit harder because Zoom pops up and takes up your whole screen width. So you could see people are typing in different colors. Uh, if you cannot find that spot at this moment, it's completely okay. It just gives you an idea of as a facilitator, while you're talking, people can be inputting their ideas. And I, in order to make this very efficient, I'd love to see everyone add their questions so I can go down the list of questions very quickly. Maybe we'll see that there's some groups of questions. That's how I like to approach these topics is not just a linear stream of audio, but also people adding their ideas at the same time. Looks like we need a few more spots down here. So I'll just put some spots for people to type their name in and feel free to ask those questions. So while you're writing questions down there, here's the overview of Kiko chat. It's built for open space events where You've got people that come in for an invitation or a topic or something they need to work on, but you don't know all the sessions and the descriptions of all the sessions that people need. So just like people are adding their questions here, this is where they could normally add a session topic. And then you can have, if you got a bunch of topics, people can break out into first, the first hour of discussion can be half the topics. The second hour of discussion can be the other half of the topics. And I'll show you how to make that happen. So it's built for open space, but it works well for many different liberating structures. And I look forward to hearing any questions and we can even think together on this call. You say, I have a favorite liberating structure that I like to use like minimum specs. How do I make that happen on Kiko Chat? And, and we can talk about that. So what you're looking at is the collaborative tool. And it's, it's the tool where you can go to get a lot of work done. But the first introduction to Kiko Chat that a group might have would be the gardens. And I'll open up the gardens right now at demo.kikochat.com. This is a 24 seven, always open space. And every circle has this space. It's a bunch of gardens, a bunch of breakout gardens. So you arrive here and this is for your circle. A circle is for a group of people. So a circle can be your online community. It can be your company. It could be your people in your neighborhood. It could be parents of a particular school class. And it's just, we provide a whole bunch of tools that are visible in the menu. And circles can have sub-circles. So we can have all dialogue facilitators, for example, are at dialogue.kikochat.com. Here's a circle for all dialogue facilitators. Give that one a moment to come up. Circles can have sub-circles. So underneath dialogue facilitators, we also have open space facilitators as one sub-circle. So here are the gardens for this example community of practice. And here we have the dialogue facilitators. So there's a lot across the world. A circle has this member map has a list of members. You could search their member profiles. All the tools are up here in the menu. So we have the gardens for this circle. We have a member directory that you're looking at now. We have a calendar of events. And just jumping back to where we are now, we're, we're all in one event. So we're in one event in a circle. Your events don't have to be in a circle. They could be a one-off event where you set up something on Eventbrite and you collect payment on Eventbrite. You connect it to Kiko Chat, and all the money goes to you from Eventbrite and your people come to your private event on Kiko Chat. 
they get a welcome email that comes right to them and only the people that paid you through Eventbrite will have access to your event or to your circle. And there are instructions for how to do that when you create your circle. Other tools, you've got Q&A. That one's not used very frequently. You've got written conversations, which are like a Google group or email discussion lists. You've got a resource library where people can share articles, links, and files, and you have a weekly newsletter. So that's where people can share one announcement per week. Anybody in the circle can, if you permit that. And it also says, here are all your upcoming events on your calendar for the next three weeks. That goes out every Monday morning. So the idea about Kiko Chat is it's, it's meant to keep your people together between your events. So we have that Monday morning newsletter to keep stitching all these events together. If you just use Zoom meetings, then your community doesn't have a place to go when your meeting is over. But with Kiko Chat, they've got an event calendar. If you want to see an example of a really active event calendar, ls.kikochat.com slash events. And I'll put all these links down at the bottom. The Liberating Structures Community of Practice, they've got 3,000 people in a Slack community. And we've integrated this Google Calendar here. So when they click Add Event on Kiko Chat, it automatically puts an event into this Google Calendar. It also pushes it out to the Slack community where 3,000 people are looking for what's going on today. You can see a lot of people are using this one. This is a very healthy online community. The neat thing about integrating with the Google Calendar is that people don't have to come to Kiko Chat to find out that there's an event going on. They could just look at their calendar and they'll see all of these events if they want them to. If they can also turn a calendar on and off. That's a, another deeper topic, but that's just one idea. If you have a community that doesn't have a calendar, you can integrate Kiko. And the neat thing is anybody can add an event. If you just have a Google Calendar outside of Kiko Chat, you have to make every single person an admin. But here, anyone that you let become a member of your circle, and you can restrict, your circles can be public or private. You can, have, you can restrict it by people who are on a list of approved email addresses, or people who have signed up through Eventbrite, or people who have invited somebody who's already in. Those are all the different options. And I know that does a lot to take in, but when you create a new circle, this is explained. You can go to kikochat.com slash new. And this is where you create a circle. Creating a circle is pretty quick. You just type in a title for your circle. This is my example circle. Uh, well, let's make it a little more realistic. We'll say it's um, North Salem neighborhood. And we'll just call it NS or northsalem.kikochat.com. So you get a, a web address that's easy to remember. You can make it a subcircle of other circles. And I'll click Create Circle. That's all you need to do to start a circle. Once you have a circle, you have all those tools that I mentioned above. Currently, you land in your garden, but we're going to change that so you land on a home page that says, Welcome to your circle. You've got the gardens. You've got a calendar. You've got a newsletter. So it'll be a very simple homepage that's coming next. But we put the gardens presently as the homepage of your circle because we want people to be able to connect easily. So the idea here is that people can pop into another garden and it's like an open space event without any start and any stop. It's open 24 seven. And your community might develop a rhythm where Wednesdays at noon for lunch, people start gathering in the garden. And they're all going to arrive here at the central garden. And so this is where you as a facilitator would stay and welcome people. And then you give them a quick orientation. You say, pop into another garden. And once you get to that garden, set the topic. I want to talk about soccer. So now the topic is soccer. People who are browsing the gardens can see that I want to talk about soccer. And they say, I want to talk about soccer too. And so they click, they go in the garden. And now they can join video. So each of these gardens has its own Zoom meeting. This is meant to be a light social tool. So we talked a lot in just a few minutes about all the tools on Kiko Chat, but this is where I'd start an online community. The Italian dialogue facilitators have 90 people in their gardens every Saturday. They meet for about 90 minutes, two hours. That's where I've met Massimo. 
it's so wonderful to see them do it. Because it's a group of facilitators, they have three people who work it. So one welcomes, and the other, as they're going through and listening to everybody talk about what topic they want, one person goes in to each of the gardens and edits the topic. However, any member can actually edit the topic. So if we're here talking about soccer and suddenly the topic changes, we could start talking about uh, food. And then we just, we'll just update our topic right there. So that's why it's like an open space. There's no sense of past and present. It's just a past and future. It's just now. What are we talking about right now? There's no agenda wall. Anybody can move at any time. Sessions don't start and stop on the hour. Just meant to be open space, but very minimalist. So I'll stop here and take any questions about the garden. And then I'll go back talking about uh, the more in-depth event that we have here and all the things you could do as a facilitator. If you want to host an open space, this is where I would recommend doing it. If you want to do a happy hour or lunch gatherings, I'd recommend it in the garden. The cost is one cent per minute per person. That's 60 cents per hour per person. It's not free, but it's also less expensive than paying a parking meter. So it's about putting in perspective, Zoom charges us half of that. They charge us 30 cents an hour per person. So we charge 60 cents an hour per person, billed to the minute. We'll stop here. Please chime in with any questions. And then we can move on to the next area. One question, Lucas, uh, just something I'm not sure I understood correctly. You said for more sort of informal events, you go to the garden, but then for a, an open space, for example, you would go somewhere different. Did I get that right? Exactly. For an open space, I would go where we are all today because you have a document to take notes. And you can also, you have some other administrative tools that I'll show you about how to label the breakout tables. So the gardens don't have the, uh, the, the, the Google Doc. That is the main difference. And they have a big picture to kind of, you can customize the gardens. You can call them the cafes. You can put pictures of cafes here, pictures of mountains, pictures of places in your part of the world. So it's completely customizable. We call those event templates. So you can create event templates for a list of gardens that you like, and you can apply those to your gardens, and you can also apply it to your events. So you can create a template and one template can be applied to many events. You can create another template and apply it to many other events. So maybe you've got an open space event for one community. You create a template that shows the breakout spaces there that are right for them. And then you've got another community that you want to make work. And those are not the right images. You create a different template and you can reuse these templates over and over again. Lucas, could I ask a follow up to that? Um, so even if I'm using the gardens because I like the imagery and I like the personality of it, um, I may not get the live Google Doc, but in the breakout rooms, you can still, if you did have someone facilitate or take notes or something, you could still have a shared screen with a Google Doc in that breakout room. Could you, could you not? Exactly. So just like I'm sharing my screen with you, you get the full capabilities of Zoom. And as the admin, you have additionally admin controls here. So you can click join video as host. That allows you to mute and boot people. It also allows you to lock down your meeting by, lock, there's a button, lock the meeting, prevent others from screen sharing, prevent others from renaming. It's all the Zoom controls that they've built in recently for security. You can also set the topics for all the breakouts. So this would be topic A. Topic B, zoom in so you can see it. Topic C, topic D, and I click save, and you could see the topics are posted here. So that's oh. one fast way. Oh, yeah. Okay, thank you. You're very welcome. The, who's the set, set zoom, a timer. Whose Zoom account is uh, used? Great question. It is not a Zoom, it is not your Zoom account. The Zoom accounts that are being used, it's Kiko creates the meetings on the fly with, through what's called an API. API is how Kiko Chat communicates with Zoom, and that's how they bill us. So we track all the meetings that are created for you and your account. And then Zoom tells us 24 hours, every 24 hours, how many minutes were used 
And then you can see I used 100 minutes in the main room and 50 minutes in. Here's the timer. So you don't need to pay Zoom. You pay us, we pay Zoom for you. We're also coming out with a freemium version where we're going to, it's going to be free for you to use with just maybe three breakout rooms. We're still deciding what it should be, but it's not with Zoom, it's with Jitsi, which is an open source meeting tool. So there'll be this freemium model and Google Docs are also free. So let's see, any other questions about the gardens? Then we can move into designing more complex events in the place where all of us are now. Please, I can't see everybody on video, so just chime in and please throw your question out there. I did have one question. Does that also mean that people who I invite to an event, they don't have to have a Zoom account or they don't have to have Zoom installed or do they need to have it installed? Yantin, they do need to have it installed, but they don't need an account, they don't need to be paying, and you don't need to be paying for them. Yeah, okay. Additionally, Thanks. if you, let's say you want a Zoom account, but you don't want to pay $15 a month because you only use it for 10 hours, you can actually use Kiko for that and pay us by the minute. So click on your name, My Meeting Tools, and you'll see it there. That's a way to have a Zoom account without having to pay Zoom $15 every month. Your chart, you're paying us 60 cents per hour per person. So the break even point there is if you use Zoom for less than 25 hours a month, that means for all your participants. So 10 people for two hours is 20 hours. So if you use it for less than 25 participant hours per month, it'll be cheaper to do it through Kiko. Or if it's variable and you don't wanna have a subscription to Zoom, then this is also your option. So you can click my meeting tools and you'll see that there. I always thought when I see the gardens that it's a public event for everybody. But uh, if once I create a circle, it's not public to everybody, but we can still use the gardens. Is that correct? Absolutely. I created this circle and let's say I want to lock it down now. I'll click menu and edit circle settings. These are the tools you have in your circle by default. We've seen the gardens, we've seen that member map. We've seen the calendar on the Liberating Structures community, the Google Calendar, we talked about that. And there's also a simple newsletter that goes out every Monday morning, which I described. It's a very simple interface there. So if we go edit circle settings, then we're going to scroll down and click more options. This is not the most beautiful interface, but it's simple. And so that's why people are able to understand it if they just click and read all the different, there's so many options in here. There could be 75 different things to customize about your circle. So here's where you can set a membership fee. And also we want you to make money with Kiko Chat because then you're gonna keep coming back to us and we'll make money by helping you. Just like Zoom makes money from all of us. So, so the way that you can make money is with sponsorships. So you can have a free circle or you can have people pay for your circle. So you can show sponsorships or not. Here's where you add all your sponsorships. It's a photo and a URL to your sponsor. So if you've got a meetup of 300 people in Dayton, Ohio that, that meets every, every month, maybe there's people that want to pay $150 to put their logo up on your page so people keep coming, just like you've got sponsors for in-person meetups. You can also charge your members a fee. If you charge your members a fee, anything over $3 you keep. So you don't actually have to pay us. If all your members are paying $3 a month, it doesn't even matter how much Zoom minutes you use, you don't get billed for it. They're paying us, your circle is free. If they pay us more than $3 a month, you get all the extra. Here's your question, Anna Caroline. We've got member access and assistant administrator. So this is where you wanna lock down your circle. You can add the username for anybody that is an assistant administrator. And this is what you want. Restrict access to members with the following email addresses. So just the people whose email addresses you list. And when you do an Eventbrite integration, here's the whole, it takes about 30 minutes to make, to connect an event on Eventbrite. When you do that, their email addresses will pop up here automatically and they will get a welcome email that says, welcome to this circle. 
after they pay, or if it's a free event on Eventbrite, that works too. So if you want the email addresses for your members, we don't share that with anyone to protect their privacy. But if you use Eventbrite, you'll have all their email addresses there and you can also message them through there. You could send an email to all of your members saying, we want to move off of Kiko chat for whatever reason, please send us your email and then they can send you their email that way. But that's one thing in our privacy policies, we don't share any personal information with any organization because people are gonna join so many different groups once they get on Kiko, they might join yours, maybe they wanna join the dialogue facilitation one, but we don't, we don't show them all the circles. It's eventually, some of you here are probably in five different Kiko chat circles since we've been around since 2012, that just over time you, you, you join more. Okay, I'll, I'll stop with that answer there. Uh, did that answer your question about how to lock it down? So this is great. I just want to know if I create an event, you all cannot see it. Is that correct? That is correct. If you lock it down and restrict access to members with the following email addresses. So all of you could go to North Salem, this one right now, because we didn't lock it down. But you, but would, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't know. I wouldn't know that it exists. That you could search for the circle on... There's a one page on Kiko Chat where you can search for circles. And you have to assume that it's going to be public because one of your members is probably going to share a tweet about it. So if it's important to lock it down, then we recommend locking it down. It costs a dollar a month per person for closed or private circles. So the two costs you pay are one dollar a month per person for anything that's private. It's like this is a public circle, so there's no charge. And then you also pay for the Zoom meeting minutes used. And as I mentioned, we're gonna come up with a freemium model where you can use Jitsi, smaller number of breakouts, and that might work for many people. Great questions, uh, open to any more questions, yes. Yeah, so to make sure I understand it correctly, if I wanted to make a circle where maybe we don't meet every month, but we meet every other month, then if I wanted to make it private, I would still have to pay a euro per person per month. So if it's a big circle, that could be a lot of money. Do, do I understand it correctly? That is right. And a lot of the people that are on the call are doing amazing work for nonprofits. We, we want to look at nonprofit pricing and, and how we can minimize that fee because we don't want that to be the obstacle. The important thing is that Kiko is getting out there because the more that we make you look good, the more you make us look good. So we want you to be getting out there. We don't want that to block you. So for anyone that has any questions about that and they're in a certain situation where it just makes it infeasible, then please do reach out. We've had 1.2 million minutes of video chat used on Kiko Chat so far over the years, and we haven't had any problems of vandalism. Uh, so sorry, but to continue on that, because the topic I'm working on mostly now, it's scientists that are using animals in testing and want to stop using them. Uh, so we're brainstorming together on how to eliminate the use. But as you may understand, it's a very sensitive topic. Uh, so it would definitely be locked down. Can I hold events uh, with them? Uh, um, or do I have to make a circle for it? Like, can you do an event without having a circle? Because that right now, there would be a price obstacle but the uh, events, maybe we could still have them, just to check. Yes, you can, but we have that same price obstacle for events. It's actually cheaper to do it as a circle because it's $1 per month per member in a circle, or it's $1 per event if the event is not in a circle for the private ones. So as I mentioned before, we're not gonna let price be the obstacle there. So just reach out to us and we, we will make it work. Uh, there's. Another link I wanna share of a Google group. This is where there are a lot of dialogue facilitators and people using Kiko Chat, and you can get more questions answered here. It's Kiko Chat tech support. I'm gonna put that in our link. Here's all these links that are helpful here that I'm putting at the bottom. Other links that we have here, Kiko's homepage. Here's how you can create your own event in our demo circle for free. I'll zoom in so you can see that. Here's an example of how to use Jitsi instead of Zoom. That's what's coming. Here's the user guide, my email and phone number. If you're a dialogue facilitator, you might wanna join any of these circles, the open space circle on Kiko Chat. 
Here's all the tools on Kiko Chat. Here's how to start your own circle. We have a bunch of questions that I can start going through. Let's see if there's any in the gardens. Here's one about the garden. Can I use my garden for my community exclusively? You thought it was one garden for everyone. So the good reason, the good answer is that every circle has its own garden. Thank you. You answered that already. Thank you. I was Nakaolina. That was the only question I see in the gardens. And then we can get into this page here about how to hold collaborative events. Any other questions on the garden? Please just shout them out. All right. Everybody who's listening to me now on the live Zoom call came through a Kiko Chat event. The Kiko Chat event looks like this. I'm gonna to go to the RSVP page. This is where you showed up. It's got a start time. It's in UTC and the person's local time zone. By default, the event is gonna be shown in the time zone that you set it up for. So if you set up Berlin time, it'll show Berlin time. People can set their RSVPs here and you can see how many people are present. As the administrator, you can click this button and you'll get, it takes a moment because it's gonna go through and actually create a Zoom meeting for all of your breakout spaces. But we don't want you to, so we're a small company. We don't want you to be nervous about the reliability of our services for your important event. So you can, let's say Kiko Chat just, you wake up one day, it's off. Um, you'll have already all your Zoom meeting links here and your meeting IDs here. So you could tell all your people, here's how you meet if Kiko's not working. Amazing. I see a question in the chat. Let's see. Okay, Mirai has a question here. We'll click participate uh, now. Can I, yeah. Um, I got a few questions. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yeah, okay. So um, I, don't understand, I didn't understand exactly what you mean about uh, the three euro payment per month and you, you don't have to pay anything. Did I understood right? And do you want to know all the, the questions so you can answer? Sure, so great. Thank you, Massimo, for the question. You, you know, you've probably met people are on this call. These are people who are trying to make change in the world. Kiko's a tool to help them do better. We want to become a stronger company. So we need sustainable revenue. And for all the organizations that can afford it, we charge $1 per month per person for any private events or any private circles. Many people do public work, so they don't have to pay that. They just pay the 60 cents per hour for Zoom. We will put in nonprofit rates that we just don't have at the moment, but it's gonna be a discount. I'd estimate it's about 25% discount for nonprofits. And we have the potential to waive the monthly membership fees for, for members. But we're hosting an event later, this, later next week, which someone's charging $450 for per person between 450 and 60, that's the, that's the range. And Kiko's making $15 per person and we're still making a lot of money. So you can host very expensive events on Kiko Chat, making thousands or tens of thousands of dollars. We don't have to help much. So it's, it's worth our time because you're doing all the work and we do the work to make sure that, that the service is running. So, in other words, price is not gonna be a blocker. Um, Mirai had one question, I know she has to go, so I wanna answer that question. We can get back to any more that you have, Massimo. She says, when we have several pages in the main room, this is a private chat question she, she asked. We have several pages in the main room. It's hard to scroll to the bottom of the page without slipping over to the page afterwards. Is there a trick or can you fix that? I understand what you're saying. So here in the main room, we have by default an etherpad, but you can replace it with a Google Doc or Post-its or a presentation. So I'm gonna do that right now. I'm going to get a example of a Google Doc. I'm gonna click edit on this event since I created it. 
there's a lot here and with time you can go in and, and scroll through slowly and see, okay, it's not too intimidating. Uh, it's the number of breakouts that, that you want, uh, add a title for each breakout room, add a discussion topic. But here we're gonna put in some pages. So Google Docs, example Google Doc. All right, and then example of a Google drawing. So you'll see the three different examples. All right, so now when we go back into our event, instead of that etherpad that everybody was typing on, you have a Google doc that now everybody can type in and you can lock it down. That's the important part. You either have to make it public to everybody or lock it down to specific people. So now we go back to this room over here, you'll see something different. Over here, we've got a Google presentation. And Mariah's question is about, I believe, when you're in a Google presentation and you're scrolling down. Is that right, Mariah? So Google presentations are a little, this is how you could do it, like a multi-day agenda where everyone can be grabbing one of these and typing on it. We, there's not much we can do about this. Google, Google presentations are, there's a lot going on. Uh, we would recommend that people click hide breakouts here so that they see the whole page. And then now if you're, I see what you're, so you're scrolling and then that's just, I guess how Google works. If you scroll down, there's nothing we can do about that unfortunately. Uh, Google scrolling is changing the page. So one th I don't use presentations myself. I use more Google Docs or Google Drawings. So you could do something with Post-its or shapes. And a neat thing, it's advanced, but I'll explain it here. And we want to write a blog post on it in case people ever want to try it themselves. But if you want to put two of these on the same page, we'll say this first one is the Google Doc. We'll call it our agenda. And then if this other one was like, that's our, our, the drawing, I'll say draw here. So you would use, again, this is pretty advanced and you see how hard it is to, to I don't expect you to do this, but if you want to, you're able to. You, you just put a word in front of the link and you put a colon there and it'll give it a tab name. You have to separate multiple links with a space. And then I'm gonna write a blog post which explains that more in depth, but now you can have multiple tabs in your event. Mm. Cool. Very neat. So you're kind of getting the idea of what you could do with, um, with Kiko Chat, I'm gonna remove these so you can see your notes again. I'll just go back in, edit. Lucas, um, when you do that, you're able, you're doing that for the main garden, right? Is it also available in those same three in each of the breakouts, gardens? Yes, so you can do that in any of, so, those that I just took out, they were, they were for all of your rooms. So if you paste in 10 Google Docs, let me show you an example of an event that's going on in a few days. Linux Foundation. They're holding some technical meetings, some people across the world. So here, we're actually embedding. So this is a page on Kiko Chat here. You make this from your circle, which is the resources, the resource library that I mentioned earlier. Again, that was up here. So it's, it's actually turned off by default, but you can turn it on with um, edit circle settings. So you can add a page that people cannot edit. So sometimes you want that. And then actually embedding the gardens inside their event. So, here you've got your, your workspaces, and this is the main room. If you want, I mean, this is the first time we're doing it, so 
I'm not sure if, how participants, because they're going to be in like two spaces at the same time. They're going to be in the main room. Maybe you would call it main room and gardens. And then it's kind of like an inside and outside because the gardens are, they don't feel like a workspace. They feel like a place to catch your breath. So you see there's many different options and you think of what works for your people. But here, if we go down, they have a different page embedded. So and that was to show what they're doing. So you would have a Google Doc at each one of these. Did that answer the question? Yes. OK, we have a bunch of questions here that can people, OK. How do you create breakouts so that participants can travel between rooms as they wish? So any of you can now travel between these rooms. It's the law of two clicks. So number one, I want to click on, well, first of all, I need to know what's going on in that topic. So as the facilitator, I'm going to just copy all of these topics and I'm going to put them into all of those rooms. So I, let me do it a little slower. Copy them over here, go to admin controls, set topics for breakout rooms, paste them in, one per line, save. Now you can see them all here. And now someone says, okay, I wanna talk about this one. I'm gonna to go to room four. You click to room four, your profile icon shows up. I'm still up here because I'm on video up here, but you can see I'm actually looking at a different page. It gives us information about where people are browsing. Once I click join video for room four, my browser is gonna come up with a pop-up and you can all see it here. Once I click open, Zoom is actually gonna give me another pop-up that says, you're already in one Zoom meeting. Do you want to leave it and go to the next? You would click yes. If you don't see that, and some people on Windows sometimes don't see that, you have to close Zoom to see Zoom's pop-up. So that's one thing that people might have a little difficulty doing is the second pop-up for some operating systems is hard to see. In, the, in that event, you can also click help. It allows people to call in by phone and people can open with a new tab here. If it's an iPad or tablet, you might need to manually enter the meeting ID. That's something to, to know. That takes care of our second question here. I'm gonna to try to zoom through these questions and then get some follow-ups. Participate via phone. Okay, we, we talked about that. At the bottom of participate, so I click on help, participate by phone, you have international dial-in numbers over here. Can I use my garden? Yes, each circle has a garden. We talked about that. Translations and localizations. So there's a, all those facilitators in this Google group, if you join it, you can hear more about our translation effort. In just 24 hours, they translated it, this Google spreadsheet of the, I just put all these in here and you can see it's, there's a lot of Dutch already, but we already got French, German, Swedish, and Spanish complete in 48 hours. That was the best part of Kiko was seeing that happen and, and having worked on this for many years, but then seeing that just happen out of nowhere. That was lovely. So that'll be up there shortly. Will we also update the admin area? Yes. First, Next. we'll take care of what the participants need, yeah. and then, sure. then we'll come for the rest of us. That, th thank you very That's much, amazing. Anna. Thank you. OK. How do you avoid collisions when lots of folks are in one Google document? The maximum is 75 people in one Google document that can be editing at the same time. If you're talking about people typing on the same line, oh, so if you get over 75, people will get booted. What you can do is have the read-only version of Google Docs here and then put a link to the editable version elsewhere. Then people go to the editable version, they make their change, and then they close it. That allows 75 people to be editing it at any given time. If you want to avoid collisions in the Google Doc, also you see what I did here is this technique. I just left a bunch of empty bullet points and it seemed like people were able to avoid collisions that way. When we have several pages in the main room, okay, Mirai, we got that question answered. What is the capacity for storing video recordings? You're gonna, when you click record, it's gonna record on your own desktop. So there really should not be a large problem there. Whatever you can store on your own computer. You can record if you are the administrator of your circle or if you're the creator of your event or if you are an assistant administrator of your event. How many facilitators do you need to host an OS on Kiko? Can one person do it on their own? Absolutely. Although I do think it's helpful to have one person who's going to help with technology. So while I'm facilitating, there might be someone that for some reason is having difficulty with their system. 
give them a phone number to call into. You have an assistant there. That person can also manage the chat and can tell me anything that I'm missing in this chat down here or in Zoom's chat. This chat down here is across all the breakout tables, just like the timer is across all breakout tables. When we see admin controls, set timer, 30 minutes, it shows up here across all breakout tables. Would it be possible to switch language on the fly? The buttons are gonna be up here, so anyone who clicks it, their page is gonna reload and they'll see it in the, in the language that they chose. And it's just going to translate the English instructions. It will not translate anything here. It may, if anybody has an interesting way to do that, we'd be definitely interested in hearing what is working for you. You don't have to, the next question, you don't have to add embed any longer. On this page here, uh, this is the event we're doing for the Linux Foundation. I did add embed. It looks like this. Well, I'm not going to go in there because I don't want to. I'll go to edit here. This is the event. I don't want to expose any private information. Uh, nothing there was, was private, I know, because that's a public event. So that's why I used it. But here, more options. Notes pages for main space. If you put the word embed on there, it's a lot to read, but you put the word embed on there, it's gonna take you can you can embed any other Kiko chat page like the gardens, and it takes out the header so it just looks better in a confined space. So that's what these notes are for. They're not for skimming, it's patiently going through and thinking about how this can help you, but it's a lot to take in. But you can see you just pop paste in the link and it changes pretty quickly. Is there messaging functionality, asynchronous, not during live events? Yes, that is going to be with your conversations tool. In the LS community, for example, we'll go to their garden. They have conversations here. So these are written conversations. It's like a listserv. So anyone can add a new topic and you can also email the group, just like a Google group. Uh, if you want to get advanced, you can do collaboration before your in-person, before your online event with some conversation starters. And then people can start thinking about what they want to work on. And then when they get there, they are, they've already started the thinking. So they, you can then embed this. And this is what I was talking about. Take this, put in question mark embedded equals true. And now you can paste this link here into our Kiko chat event. I'll just put it in the main room. And then when you go back to participate in the event, there's your email discussion list. And notice the header is stripped out because we did embedded equals true with a question mark in front of it. Then, okay, now I'm gonna go back to the notes. I, I just overwrote the notes. The notes page still exists, but now when I take that out, it's gonna show me the notes that used to be there because they're not deleted. They're just not displayed when you overwrite it with something else. I, we have five minutes and then I have to help a facilitator with her meeting in France. It's kind of an important one they got there. So uh, we will so much to go through. Let's see. So that tucks through the asynchronous stuff. Can more than one person in a circle schedule events under the license or have permission to do this? So either in your circle, you can lock it down and say only I as the administrator or you and your assistants can schedule events or you can open up to everyone in your circle. So that's your choice. All of that is billed to your circle. So 10 people can be creating events. Those Zoom minutes get billed to your circle. If you're doing the option where you don't pay, but everybody pays $3 a month, then it doesn't cost you anything. If you, everybody's paying $10 a month, then you're making $3. But we make $3, you make $7 a month. Have I the power to mute or close video participants in their rooms? Yes, you can do that when you click admin controls and join video as host. It lets you join the Zoom meeting as the host. 
the pricing is confusing. You can, yes, you can read about it at the bottom of our homepage and it's going to change and become something that you'll like more. Kikochat.com slash about, the link is at the bottom. Uh, here's the pricing. It says one cent per minute for video. And then for your private circles, there's a $1 charge for your first 99 members. Uh, for any private events that are not in a circle, this $1 per participant fee also applies. But if you don't want to pay, your members can pay $3 a month. Okay. This meeting is going to stay open. Folks are welcome to stay. I have to help with this other training. Uh, it's actually a live event please write to me with any additional questions. We're gonna do this every Thursday. I got two more minutes. Any other questions before we go? Thank you very much. It's amazing. This, this tool is yeah, it's built great. by facilitators. Thanks, Luke. Thanks. This, this is exactly what I wanted to hear about, about it and get in this first step into it. Thank you. Thanks. Lucas. Thank you, Lucas. I'll follow up with some more. Much appreciated. And the reason it, it kind of feels a little natural is because there's been dozens of people ahead of you that came to me and said, can you make it do this thing? I need to customize this word. So please keep that coming. I'd rather hear it now than in a month when there's more people to talk to. So this is maybe a question for a later time, but it, 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 for me, it's about I had a little question there. How do people in separate rooms keep mindful they might leave and go somewhere else, like in a live open space? So I'm interested in how, as it's happening, it it so the timings of sessions and these things, how do you keep that sense of an alive open space event happening? You can create an agenda document, maybe in a Google spreadsheet or on a wiki or a Google Doc, anything that you like. It could be a grid format or not. I'll come up with a blog post to show what I've seen others do. Mm. I also have an idea. If you stay a bit longer, I can share. Mm. I want to include artists in my event. Mm -hmm. So this right. meeting will stay open, but I will drop off. My contact information is on the bottom. I look forward to getting a chance to working with many of you in the future. Uh, thanks for your questions today. Thank, Thank you, you so much. So much. Thank you very much. Oh. Bye, thanks, Lucas.